What's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Let's try that intro again. I totally skipped the beat on that. What's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana with another kick-ass episode coming at you live and direct here for the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about four ways to get clients. We're talking four ways to bring in high quality borrowers. How do you do it? And what's the shortest path to the cash to be able to enact leverage so you can get more clients with less time, energy, effort, money, and stress. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So if that sounds like the station you're wanting to be dialed into, you've come to the right place at the right time with the right people. So let's just talk about a few different factors, because as you know, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat, right? There's so many different ways to bring in clientele nowadays with social media and advertising and the various different technology resources we have at our fingertips with AI. So it can be overwhelming, right? It's like, how do you thread the needle on the best way? What's the, as we like to call it here on Planet Prosper, the shortest path to the cash way, right? There may be a long way to get to your income goals, and there's a shorter way. There's a hard way, and there's a easier way. And so my goal for you here on this session is to give you the easier way to condense decades into days and to be able to impact your business with way more leverage, which means, you know, if you want to produce a result, you can produce a result with a lot of effort and a lot of grinding, a lot of white knuckling, or you can produce that same effort with flow and finesse, and maybe even some fun. I don't know about you, but I love me some fun. So if you can make it fun and enact a certain degree of sophistication into your process that allows you to have it be easy, breezy, lemon squeezy, as opposed to hard and difficult and struggle, I don't know about you, but I'm all about that. So we're going to bring that as the frame inside of our conversation today so that as you listen to this, I recommend you take notes and just write down key distinctions that you feel are impactful, relevant, significant for you on your journey, all inside of the context of how do you get more clients, not just with the money you're spending, but more importantly, the time you're spending, because you can always make more money. You can't get the time back, right? That time, once you use it, it's gone forever. And so this is not a dress rehearsal, this thing called life, right? It's a one-shot deal. So we want to make sure we get the most from it. So let's dive in without further ado. And I want to first off, just remind you that I didn't come up with these ideas. You know, I'm a strong proponent of never invent, always improve. And Alex Ramosi is an absolute marketing genius, uh, along with many other marketing geniuses out there like Jay Abraham that have paved the way for folks like us to learn from. And so I want to give a shout out to Alex Ramosi on this session because I got inspiration from this session, listened to one of his podcasts, and I was like, that's a brilliant breakdown of just four simple ways to bring in business. And I thought I would curate this and customize this for the mortgage industry so you guys can leverage the same marketing brilliance in your own business. So with that being said, the first way to bring in more business and to attract more high quality borrowers is call people who know you. Call people who know you. That could be friends, that could be family members, centers of influence. It could be buyer and seller agents that are tied to transactions you've already done on the purchase side. It could be any number of business professionals that are in your networking groups or who are friends of friends, uh, people you've just had on your Rolode- in your Rolodex, in your contact list, perhaps for weeks, months, years, decades. And so there's people who know you and you know them. The question is, do they know what you offer that's unique and distinct and different from any, every other Joe Schmo LO out there. Are they clear about what you do that's distinct and different? That's a strategic advantage for your ideal partner and client. Like what's the unique advantage that you bring to the table that no one else does? Who cares? Why does it matter? It's on you to educate them. Or as I like to say to my kids, educate. It's on you to educate them on 
What makes you distinct, unique, different? What's your unique advantage? So inside of that category called centers of influence, friends, family members, people who know you, there's a lot of different things you can be thinking about in terms of reaching out and contacting. One thing you definitely want to be thinking about is who has the highest reach, the most influence, who has the highest capacity to send you the most amount of business most often. And usually that's going to be business professionals. It might be realtors. It could be uh, divorce attorneys. It could be centers of influence like uh, financial planner, accountants, those sorts of professionals. You always want to think though, who is my client speaking with before, during, and after they're working with me? Who do they need help with and help from before they work with me and after they work with me? And obviously, the higher you move up the totem pole in people you're talking to, when it comes to people doing purchase transactions or refinance transactions, you're going to find that the people that have the most influence on that line of connections and those lines of influence, those are the people you want to put on your strategic list to reach out to. So for example, certainly realtors would be one of them. Maybe at your networking group, you have people who have a book of business that maybe is catering to helping working with investors or working with people who are getting divorced or working with people who are getting married. Those people all need some form or fashion of what you bring to the table, whether it be advice, counsel, helping them make wise decisions when it comes to refinancing or when it comes to uh, buying or investing in their own property or a new property, an additional property. And so think strategically about who you already know. I'm surprised how many people don't reach out to the buyer agent and seller agent when they're doing transactions they're already doing. Like they're not actually reaching out to them and saying, hey, that was a great transaction. Thank you for your contribution to getting the, that across the finish line. You know, I'm always looking for consummate professionals. You've been the dust on top of outstanding. Are you open to having a conversation to see if we might have the right fit, the right synergy to do business together and to send you some buyers and sellers? Are you open to that conversation? And you'll notice that just by having that be a routine part of your post closing, closing, easy for me to say, post closing protocol, you'll have more buyer and seller agents who send you business just because you're making a habit of cultivating those relationships. So keep that in mind when it comes to people who you already know, that's probably the top of the list of priority of people you want to be talking to. Buyer and seller agents linked to the transactions you're already doing because those people already have an experience of the expertise and the excellence you bring to the table, true or not true right? So why not leverage that to your advantage? And of course, I'd be remiss not to mention one of the most important people that you know that you should be reaching out to, and that is clients. Who are we wanting to ask in the pool of clients that we have? Who are we wanting to ask when it comes to getting referrals? You probably guessed it by now. Those who give you a five-star review, because think about it, who better to send you a referral than somebody who just gave you a five-star review? That's the best source of referrals ever, your happy clients, right? So make sure you're asking your clients for reviews, getting those reviews, get those five-star reviews, and then ask the people who give you a five-star review, your raving fans, for referrals. And that's how you create that upward spiral of awesome, where one client begets another client, begets another client, and it's that endless chain of referrals. The second way to bring in more business is to post to channels you know. So those would be Facebook groups, those would be different social media channels, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera, Facebook, who you have followers and fans on, you're building a following on those re respective platforms and channels. And so obviously you need to continue to feed the monster as it were by bringing content to the table that's educational, that motivates, educates, inspires, and that is a full-time job and then some for a lot of us just trying to figure out what to put out, which is a big reason why I rolled out my concierge marketing service because it's a pain in the butt just to come up with content, just to know what to even talk about, let alone produce it with excellence. And you don't have the time 
chances are to be messing with all that stuff. You got in this business to serve clients with the single most important transaction of their life, buying their first home or their second or third or fourth home, and to help them in that process of creating generational wealth in real estate, not learning a million and one things about TikTok and Instagram and Facebook lives and social media and creating all the graphic design. Like it's just so much, right? It's so much to learn and to handle. So if you feel overwhelmed, welcome to the club. You should feel overwhelmed. That's not what you really want to be bogged down with every day, but you do want to have some killer kick-ass content. So some things to think about inside of this is like, if you're going to post to channels that you know, make those channels count. Ideally have uh, at least one Facebook group that you can post to on the daily. It might be a Facebook group for realtors where we're bringing community and affinity inside of a group where it's not just you posting content no one looks at, but it's a group where there's affinity and community and connection. And it's like, Hey, these are all like-minded people. We can learn from each other, right? There's power in that. But not only that is you can post content daily that inspires, that educates, that brings value. And then once a week, maybe do a Facebook live, maybe something like what I'm doing here. I'm creating content for my YouTube. I'm creating content for my reels. I'm creating content for all my social media just by doing a Facebook live using a system called StreamYard once every two weeks. Once every two weeks, I do this. And then we repurpose every part of the pig so that this content can be cut up into multiple different chunks and it can be reused and repurposed. And I want to invite you to consider that's a really smart way to leverage your time is create some content that's useful and helpful to your target audience and then repurpose it in a variety of different ways using a video editor, a graphic designer, and then cut it up into bite-sized chunks. And so something like this can easily be created. You know, I can create at least 10 to 15 reels just from a 20 to 30 minute piece of content doing this flap my lips session live on Facebook. And I'm also doing this on LinkedIn and multiple other channels all at the same time using StreamYard. I prefer to do things live because it has a different energy than if I'm just looking at my navel, trying to get it all perfect in my own home studio. I hate that. I just nitpick too much. I just want to throw it out there and, you know, we'll throw some yogurt to the fan, hope something sticks and just bring heart to it and have that raw organic feel of like, we're bringing it live and real here. This is not some, you know, glossed up, shined up, polished up thing in some studio. It's like, we're just bringing it real and raw. And so I hope you appreciate that. If you don't, you can change the channel, increase the volume or change the channel. That's what I'm talking about. So create channels where you can target specific people that you can help in some way. You might have a channel for divorce people on advice around the transactions that they're going to need to consider if they execute a divorce. I know it's a sensitive topic, but they really need help when it comes to that stuff. A lot of people are clueless and there's a lot of costly ramifications if they don't know what they don't know and they make blunders. And now they're under a big dark cloud of regret saying I could have, would have, should have, but I didn't because I didn't have the right advice. So that could be a particular group you target, or it could be veterans or you're giving advice on all the different programs for veterans and all the benefits that are exclusively for veterans and the different cool things that veterans can take advantage of that the average civilian can't when it comes to home loans and real estate benefits and services. So that could be a great niche and there are riches in niches. So specific niches and value to those niches is the name of the game. The other thing you want to think about is having a group for realtors and not just any realtor, but like the upper echelon top producers, not the bottom feeders, not the str struggle bunnies, but those who are really the career agents who are making things happen, who are taking market share right now. Those are the people you want to be helping and serving and contributing to. So create a group and serve those people. And so that's another way where you can build up momentum, not in a day, but daily by providing valuable content on those various different channels. So those are some things to think about there. Now let's talk about the next topic, uh, the next area where you can 
bring in more mortgage clients. We talked about the first area, which is calling people that you know. The second area is posting to channels that you know. The third way to bring in more clientele is to call people you don't know to call people you don't know. So that's where it's like, you're going to target a list of people who have the highest probability to give you the highest payoff possible for the time, energy, and effort. That's the big question, right? If you're going to call people you don't know, who are the people that are most likely to put the most amount of zeros and commas in your bank account? That's the million dollar question. And I would submit to you that the highest yielding, most profitable target market for that is top producing realtors. Those who are doing 15, 20 plus buyer sides a year, and they need someone in their corner to facilitate those transactions so they can get paid, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. Chances are at this point, you're like, Dorn, those people already have mortgage lenders. They already have mortgage broker. They already have a mortgage loan officer, especially over the last two years. Everyone and their dog is chasing after the same realtors. They're getting hounded and pounded, and they don't want to hear from me. I mean, I call them and they're not even giving me the time of day. Why would I beat my head against that brick wall, Dorn? Well, I can appreciate that. And that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us, because that is not an easy code to crack. That's not an easy needle to thread. But there are some ways that work, even in today's tough market, that allow you to get that appointment, that allow you to become the welcome guest versus the annoying pest, that allow you to bypass and obliterate the smoke screens, the objections, and the buyer defense mechanisms. And again, this is not something you can Google search, right? It's not something you can just look up online and figure out. We've taken 20 years almost to create this, 19 years. You know, you know I'm a sucker for punishment. I've been doing this for that long. It's crazy to think, right? Sucker for punishment status for sure. But you can try to figure that on your own, or you can lock in on a, on a proven plan and formula, a recipe, a blueprint that allows you to condense decades into days. And that's another way to enact leverage is leverage other people's recipes and formulas that are battle tested and proven to work. So you don't have to try and reinvent the wheel, reinventing the wheel. I don't know about you, y'all, but I've found that reinventing the wheel tends not to pay very well. So why reinvent the wheel when you can leverage someone else's proven formula? So when it comes to reaching out to these top producing realtors, you need to have the words that work that get some hot for what you got to make you positioned as the welcome guest instead of the annoying pest. You need to know how to overcome the objections. You need to know how to make that initial overture. You need to use what we call the all cheese, no whiskers approach. Because as we like to say here on Planet Prosper, realtors are a bit like mice. They love cheese, they hate whiskers. They know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat, right? So you don't want to give them any semblance, any association to whiskers. All cheese, no whiskers. So that's what we teach you on Planet Prosper, MortgageMarketingCoach.com is how to do that all cheese, no whiskers approach. So you can book one, two, three appointments a day and book three, five, 10 appointments a week. And if you do the math on that, based on the numbers that we work with here on Planet Prosper, out of every 10 outbound live connections where you actually get someone on the phone, you're going to book at least three appointments on average. Out of those three appointments, you're going to land at least one VIP partner. And then you're probably going to need to land at least 10 VIP partners to get seven who send you at least one deal a month. There's going to be three that just don't pan out. You bless them, you release them, and you replace them. But it's all math. It's all math that works when you work it, but you got to put in enough volume, enough reps to get enough of those VIP partners to send you the 5, 10, 15 plus deals a month. But again, what else are you going to do? You twiddle your thumb and hope and pray that someone calls you, that tends not to be a very good marketing strategy, right? We probably want to need to be more proactive and preemptive than that. So that's the third way is call, calling people you don't know. And top producing realtors is by far the shortest path to the cash when it comes to that. Now, the fourth way to bring in more clientele is to advertise, right? That's where you pay to play. And generally it's pay-per-click, right? You can do it Obviously, there's old school methods where you can do a, a place, uh, a space ad and a 
advertisement like a, a magazine or a newspaper, but that's kind of dinosaur method nowadays. You could do billboards, which are very expensive. You can do uh, advertising on a bus stop or a bus chair or something like that, a bus bench. But again, those are more branding methods. And generally speaking, you're going to just drop a thousand, two thousand, three thousand plus per month and not necessarily know how much you're getting in return because it's not as easy to track response rates and return on investment. So that's more just branding and branding tends not to pay the bills very well. It's a great way to get your name out there where people know that you exist, but that's not necessarily going to get your phone ringing with qualified mortgage borrowers, right? So that's where we want to be strategic. The other thing you want to be strategic about when it comes to advertising is that you know, you could let someone else advertise and just buy leads. That's what buying leads is. If someone else advertises and then you pay a premium to have someone else do the dirty work of doing that advertising and you pay probably 3x, 4x, even 5x more than you would pay if you knew how to do what they did to generate that lead. So buying leads is basically advertising and just delegating to someone else and paying a premium for that delegation. And you and I both know if you've tried that, that's definitely doing it the hard way, right? You're sifting through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. You're maybe closing one, two, or three out of a hundred. You get a bunch of chaff and you're herding cats. And it's like, they don't really give a rat's ass about who you are. And you're selling yourself on them because there's five other mortgage lenders that got the same lead pounding down their door. So that puts you in a disadvantage and it wastes a lot of time and a lot of money. And it cuts your margins down significantly. So you're working longer and harder for less. So that's generally not a great idea <laughs> unless you like to work longer and harder for less. I don't recommend it. The other thing you want to consider is when you're advertising, ideally, you want to advertise to people who not only are in need of a mortgage, but are likely to need an, an, another mortgage in the future and or they're going to need to sell because it's not just about getting a client for yourself. It's about getting clients for your partners, for your VIP realtor partners. If you can help bring pre-approvals and qualified buyers and sellers to your VIP top producing realtors, then you hold the cookie. You're in the power position, right? And so now you can literally pick and choose who you work with because you're bringing so much value by leveraging your advertising, not just for your mortgage business, not just to generate borrowers and close deals for yourself, but to bring a steady stream of buyers and sellers to your partners. And that's where it really gets exciting because where the real money is, is having those partners sending you one, two, three deals a month pre-sold, pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, hot for what you got, pre-sold on you before they even talk to you because they've been endorsed so emphatically by a top producing realtor to work with you as their go-to mortgage pro. You see the power in that? So when you're doing advertising, you want to be specific. You don't want to just be like, you know, anyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror who needs a mortgage. Because if any, everybody is a potential prospect, no one's going to be a customer. No one's going to be a client. So you want to shift from vague generalities to meaningful specifics. And that means it's all about riches and niches. So rather than just going for anyone with a pulse could fog a mirror in a specific zip code and throwing your yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks, for example, on Facebook, if you can target specific niches like doctors, dentists, uh, chiropractors, nurses, uh, investors, right? Firemen policemen, these specific niches you can speak directly to that allows you to have a custom tailored message. Like you're the mortgage pro who solves those specific problems. And here's another really powerful distinction. This one distinction was an absolute game changer for me. I know it's not a brilliant idea when I'm about to drop, but once you allow this to sink into your head and heart, if you're anything like me, it's going to be an absolute game changer for you too. And here's the distinction. You ready for this? Here it is. Solving rich people problems pays a lot better than poor people problems. You know what I'm saying? Like you could target the bottom feeders that are in trailer parks and help them buy or sell and you'll make peanuts. But if you help doctors or dentists or lawyers or even policemen or firemen, you know, they're, they're not making huge money, but they're making more than the people in the trailer parks, Right. You're going to find that those solving those types of problems pays way better. If you're helping investors who 
already have a million dollar net worth and they want to get to $10 million net worth, that problem and solving that problem is going to pay way better than getting someone into a $150,000 trailer park or something like that. It's like those types of problems are not going to pay very well in comparison to the higher, uh, more affluent clientele type of problems. So when you think about that, you want to target niches that give you highest probable probability of highest payout possible. That's a lot of syllables, <laughs> but you'll notice that having riches in niches by targeting those specific niches with a specific offer that hits right between the eyes of the problem they have. And it might just simply, for example, going after divorce attorneys, who goes after divorce attorneys in this space? Very few people, why they just don't think about it. But who do divorce attorneys have? Clients who are thinking about or executing the decision to divorce. And those people generally do what? They either refinance their home or they sell it. And all those require what? Usually a mortgage and or one of your professionals, like a mortgage, like a real estate agent to help with the selling side. So by targeting niches that require buyers and sellers, like divorce attorneys, like investors, you're going to find that you're going to not only have a higher return on investment, but you're going to have a higher probability of bringing buyers and sellers to your partners. And that's where the real money is, guys. That's what most people completely lose sight of. Where the real money is, is not your initial transaction from the transaction you're doing as a result of the advertising. The real money is taking that buyer or seller and going to a top producing realtor and saying, hey, I'm looking for a rock star realtor in your area to send my buyers and sellers to. Are you open to having a conversation? And then now you're able to open the door to a partnership by virtue of being a go-giver versus a go-taker, a go-getter, where you're leading with value. You're in the power position. Now, instead of you being interviewed by the realtor, you're interviewing them. You're in the power position. You hold the cookie. And if you don't jive, you just find someone else, right? If you don't have synergy and chemistry, you find someone else. It's like some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. It ain't no thing like a chicken wang. You're in the power position. You get to choose who you bring that business to. And then once you start that relationship and they experience the dust on top of outstanding that you bring to the table, once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good. True or not true, right? So now that's where the treasure trove unlocks because now you're unlocking the vault where you're getting one, two, three deals a month from a top producing realtor who's sending you all their business all the time. And when you're making three, five, K plus per deal, that adds up pretty quick. That's a lot more profitable than just the yield, the return on investment that you're going to get from doing your advertising and getting one transaction and calling that a day. So leveraging your transactions from, from advertising to bring to your partners strategically is the name of the game. Does that make sense, guys? I hope you're getting value from this. So that's essentially the four ways to bring in more clientele. I'm going to recap on those four ways just in case you missed it. The first way is call people who you know, your centers of influence, your friends, your family, buyer and seller agents linked to the transactions you're already doing. The second strategy is post channels that you know social media channels, Facebook groups, and all the different social media channels that you already have set up. You might want to add some more strategically, if that makes sense, but post to channels that you know. The third strategy is to call people you don't know, like top producing realtors and building your dream team of VIP partners who can send you one, two, three deals a month. And the fourth strategy is advertise, but do it strategically and consider leveraging the power of riches in niches and not just getting the yield from that one transaction on your advertising, but using that transaction and those buyer and seller contact opportunities and feeding them to your dream team, using them to attract your dream team partners, and then having an engine that continue to feed them. So there's an exceedingly high pain of disconnect because if they go full blown stupid on you and they don't reciprocate and they take you for granted, you can bless them and release them. 
send them on their way and easily replace them with another top producing realtor because you're a loan officer, mortgage bro broker, mortgage lender who brings value to your partners. You're not just a loan leech, a mortgage parasite. You're not just a go-getter, you're a go-giver. And that allows you to hold the cookie. You're in the power position and you get to pick and choose who you work with. So that being said, guys, I want to give you an opportunity if you're watching this and you're like, Dorn, I love what you just dropped. This makes perfect sense. I need a roadmap. I got so much going on. There's so many different ways to skin the cat. And I just feel like I'm wandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked without a GPS, without a roadmap. I just need a playbook where I don't have to be creative. I don't have to have to hope that it's going to pan out. I just need a proven formula that I can stick the key in the ignition and drive away with. And if that's you and you're on a hundred percent commission, you, you would, you kill with no safety net and you have an ambition to add at least an extra hundred thousand dollars plus to your annual income. And you are not just interested in creating a breakthrough, but you're defiantly committed. In other words, there's something at stake for you that has us be an absolute white, hot fire, burning desire to create a breakthrough in your business and success and a breakthrough in your business is a must, not just a should. If that's you, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we could lift up the hood on your business and look at what's working, what's not working, uh, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our proven system and formula. And if not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. But either way, you'll leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Does that sound fair? If it does, you just want to have a conversation. It's not a sales call. It's a clarity call just to see if we have the right fit, the right synergy to help you create a breakthrough. Go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with me. You've been listening to Dorn Aldana with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. If you're down for more, you dig what you got, you got to be knowing we've got a whole lot more in store. So if you want to learn how we can really pour gasoline on the fire, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. We'll see you again on the next episode and be blessed, y'all. Peace. Thanks for being with us.